Okay, we are now live. Welcome. This is Jack from tofluency.com. And welcome to this lesson where I'm going to give you the money phrases and expressions that you need to know as an English learner. So we're going to do something a little bit different because instead of just giving you the phrases and explaining what everything means, we're going to make this a little bit more interactive. So I'm going to test your knowledge throughout this lesson. And what you need to do is to complete the missing word in the following sentences. And also, if you are watching live, then I want you to give me lots of examples, share your examples with us. And be sure to keep watching to the end because I'm going to have details of how you can get a free PDF summary of this lesson. So it's going to give you all the phrases that we talked about, give you more examples and all of that good stuff. So if you are new here, welcome. My name is Jack. I have the website to fluency.com. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and turn on that notification bell. And then please share this lesson with your friends. Okay, so with all that being said, we have a bunch of people watching live right now. And I'm just going to go in the chat box, okay? And see where everyone is from. So let me know where you are from. So we've got Bagus from Indonesia here. Good to have you. We've got Perry from Liverpool. Very cool. Liverpool is a great city. Zahura is here. Diego is here. Jessica is here too. We've got Josep from Spain. Great. So today we are going to talk about money. Money, money, money. And a great phrase to start us off with. And this highlights why money is a great topic for English learners. Is this. Look at this phrase on your screen. Money makes the world go round. Money makes the world go round. So this means that money is really important, that it's a big part of our life. And this expression is stating that money is maybe the most important thing. So I want to know, is money the most important thing in life for you? Is it the most important thing in life for you? Let me know in the chat. Okay, so money makes the world go round, which means that money is really important. So again, today I'm going to give you lots of expressions related to money. At the end, there will be a PDF link, which I'll send you the PDF through Facebook Messenger. So be sure to stick around for that. And to stick around means be sure to stay for that. So be sure to stay until the end. Okay, so money makes the world go around. Now, I just wanna talk about cars very quickly. And this is going to lead into our first expression. So I am not a big car person. I'm not really into cars. I am not really into cars. I'm just gonna turn up my mic volume a little bit. So I'm not into cars, which means I'm not really that interested in them. However, there is one car that I would love to have. There is one car that I would love to have, and it is Tesla, Tesla. So I would love to have a Tesla, but the problem is this. There's a problem with the Tesla. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. Okay, so that's the first phrase. This might be easy for you. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money for a Tesla. I don't have enough money to go out tonight. I don't have enough money to study abroad. It's a great phrase to know because we say this a lot. We say this a lot in everyday life. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to buy a Tesla at the moment. So your first test is this. Complete the sentence. It's on your screen now. I can't something it. I can't something it. 
let me know what this is. Who can complete that sentence? While you're doing that, I'm just going to get out the chat box so I can follow the chat. Perfect. That is much better. Okay, so I can't something it. Can you complete this phrase? It's this. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. A lot of people are saying afford. Some people are saying I can't buy it, which is fine. It's great. But to afford something means that you have enough money to buy it. Fantastic. So many people are getting this right. I can't afford it. So to if you can't afford something, it means you don't have enough money for it. So like I was saying before, I don't have enough money for a Tesla. I can't afford a Tesla. So this is a very, very good phrase to know. It's a common phrase that people use. I can't afford something. You can ask questions like, can you afford it? Do you think we can afford this new house? Do you think we can afford this new house? Do you think we can afford a new car? I'm going to get a bonus soon, which means I'll be able to afford this new car. So you can see this is a very, very common phrase that we use in English. Okay, I can't afford it. Now, have a look at this. Look at that house. You can say here, we can't afford that kind of house. We can't afford that kind of house. So when people are looking for, or when people are looking to buy a house, when people want to buy a house, you, it's important to know if you can afford it or not. And that example I gave you, look at the size of that house. Do you think that is pretty? Or do you think it's ugly? Or maybe okay? I like that style of house. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you like this style of house? And could you afford that type of house? We can't afford that kind of house, but could you afford it? Love to know. Lolly Lolly says, I can't afford a river diamond. What is a river diamond? A river diamond. Okay. Are you guys ready for the next one? What about this one? Look at this guy here. This is probably the international sign of saying that you have no money. Okay. Can you complete this sentence? Can you complete this sentence? And just while you're doing that, a lot of people are saying that the house is uh, perfect. There are too many rooms to clean. It's a great house. Um, oh, a lot of people are saying I'm broke, skinny, scat, skint. Okay, we have it. Sal has answered this correctly. I'm skint. I'm skint. So to be skint means that you have zero money. You don't have any money. And I was really skint at university. So I remember the last week before the break, I had about two or three pounds to last me for the week. So I bought things like baked beans and bread and I had baked beans on toast. I was really skint at university and I had a few jobs there, but I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. I was really skint at university. Some people are saying broke and that's great too. I'm broke. I'm skint. I'm broke. But I love this one. I'm skint. I'm skint at the moment. I'm skint at the moment. So it's a good one to know. And that picture, I think, is the international symbol saying that you have no money. You're, you have empty pockets. You have no money. It's a little bit different now because people have credit cards, but that, that symbol is also used today. 
That symbol is also used today. Very good. I thought is here saying that's a new word for me or a new word to me. Yeah, that's a good one to know. I'm skint. I am skint. Okay. Now the next one, before I show you the next one, do you know those people on Facebook or Instagram? And they love posting pictures about holidays or vacations and they like to show themselves by the beach in really warm climates and it seems like they are always on holiday that they are always on vacation i'm sure you have one of those friends on social media and i'm going to show you a picture of this example now let's take a look at this we have a couple a very attractive couple who are on a boat by the coast and it looks like they are somewhere very nice. It's sunny, the water is clear and they seem to be having a good time. Do they have, I can't see, do they have a drink in their hands? Most likely, most likely. But this also looks like an expensive holiday. So complete this sentence. They must be pretty something off. They must be pretty something off. Let's have a look. Molly already has it. Jessica has said it as well. Sal says show off. It, yeah. What we're talking about here is that they are showing off. Um, that's what people think. But in this case, they must be pretty well off. They must be pretty well off. And I added pretty just to give it a little bit more magic to the sentence, let's say. They must be pretty well off, which means lolly lolly, fantastic, wealthy. So to be well off means that you have enough money. You have more than enough money. You're doing well. Oh, maybe that's a sentence coming soon. That you have money. So to be well off means that you have money. So if they can afford that type of holiday, they must be pretty well off. You can also say this. They must be loaded. They must be loaded. They must be loaded. So to be loaded means that you have a lot of money. Lots and lots of money. So they must be loaded. They must be loaded if they can go on all of these holidays. They must be loaded if they're always away on vacation in really nice places. So yeah, to be loaded. So to be well off means to be rich. To be loaded means to be rich. And there's just one more I want to share with you. I love this one. They must be doing all right. Because listen to that intonation. They must be doing all right. They must be doing all right. This is a British way to say that they are rich. It's understated. Understated. They must be doing all right. I think he's doing all right. In fact, I remember Ricky Gervais told a joke about Paul McCartney and look this up look up Ricky Gervais Paul McCartney joke and he made a joke about how he lost Paul McCartney lost money because of a divorce and people didn't like the joke and he said oh come on I think he's doing all right I think he's doing all right which means he's still loaded. He still has a lot of money. He's still really well off. So that's how we used it. I think he's doing all right. So have a look at that joke later. Have a look at that joke later. Let's just go to the chat for a little bit. Good afternoon from Brazil. I wish I could be there too. Fantastic, Daniel. If you're watching the replay, click the live chat 
button on your YouTube app. So then you can follow the comments in real time. Marjane, or Marijana is here. Nice to see you, Jack. Thank you. Julie says, cool expression. Yeah, let's just have a little recap. So we have, they must be pretty well off. They must be loaded. They must be doing all right. And you'll notice we're using must here. Must. Because we're using evidence that we see and then making a opinion or stating what we think is true based on what we see. They must be. They must be. Because of this, they must be. Because they're going on vacation all the time, they must be loaded. They must be loaded. Aitor says, my dream is to be well off. Maslow Bogic says, I'm watching, I'm watching the replay. No, you're live. You are live. You are live. Cool. All right, let's move on. At the end, we have three idioms, and then I'm also going to give you details about how you can get the free PDF for this lesson. Take a look at this one. Complete this sentence. How much are you something? How much are you something? And look at the picture for a clue. Payday. Payday. The day that you get paid. The day that you get paid. How much are you something? Yep, you could say how much are you paid? That works well. But it's a very short, there are only two letters in this answer. Common man says in, no. Somebody says own, no. You can say paid, but I'm looking for something else. No one has it yet. Only two letters. We have debt, earning, get, age, spend, paid. Again, that works. No one has it yet. I'm going to show it in five seconds. Oh, Boomay! Boomay! Fantastic. How much are you on? How much are you on? And if you want to add a little bit of stress, how much are you on? How much are you on? So this is asking people how much they get paid for their job. How much are you on? Now, where you live, is this a common question to ask people? Can you ask people, how much are you on? Is that a common question? Is that polite to ask? Because in America and in the UK, you don't ask people how much they earn or how much that they are on. It's not a question you ask people. You ask, you can ask family, your wife. Um, that's about it really, not you don't ask friends. You can ask friends, but normally it's, it would happen if you are both drinking and the conversation leads to it. But normally you don't ask people, how much are you on? How much are you on? How much are you on? So people are saying it's an impolite question. It's not polite to ask. Yeah. I think that's probably, um, it's most likely true across the world, I think. So, Bazoon says it's a personal matter. Yeah, I think so too. Good. That's good to know. All right. Here's another question. And I'll put keynote on. Here it is. Look at this question. What are they offering you? What are they offering you? So this is something that you can ask, again, your wife or your family. 
if they have a job offer and they're not sure if they're going to take it or not, what are they offering you? What are they offering you? Which means, what salary are they thinking about giving you? Okay, what are they offering you? Good, so how much are you on? You ask that to friends, not friends, sorry. You ask that to family, but no one else really. And then what are they offering you? This is what you will ask if somebody has a job offer. If somebody has a job offer. Okay. Yeah, there are other ways to say this. For example, you can say, um, what's your salary? How much do you earn? Yeah, what's your salary and how much do you earn? Those are two other ways to say it. But I love the phrase, how much are you on? Even though we won't really use that a lot in everyday English. Daniel says salary and benefits. Yeah, so especially in America, when people get offered a job, it will include benefits in addition to the salary. So these benefits are usually based around healthcare, healthcare. So the company will offer healthcare services to their employees. And this can include basic healthcare, it can include dental, and it can also include healthcare for the family. So a lot of people want to find a full-time job so that they can get the benefits too. Because if you get a part-time job, it's highly unlikely that they'll give you benefits. It's kind of interesting and something that I didn't know about before I moved to America. Mohammed says, I am paid enough for living. Very good. Golden Sun says, I'll skip the question if someone asks me and change the topic. Yeah, you can just say, I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you that. It's a, a good way to respond. Okay, let's go back. Can you complete this one? The picture is giving you a clue. I like that picture. I haven't had a pay something in years. I haven't had a pay something in years. Okay, I'm going to give you this in five seconds. I haven't had a pay something in years. And then, can you guess what this is? What, what am I doing now? Okay, Molly. Molly has it right. There are a couple of ways you can say this. I haven't had a pay raise or a pay rise in years. I haven't had a pay raise. I haven't had a pay rise in years. So there are two ways to say this, and a lot of people are getting this right. You can also say pay increase. Yeah. Now, one is American, raise, and the other one um, is British, rise. I haven't had a pay rise in years. To me, now, it just sounds more natural to say raise. <laughs> and you can say, I haven't had a raise in years. You don't need to say pay. I haven't had a raise in years. Asking for a raise at work is always awkward. I remember asking for a pay raise when I was working at an old company, and it's not the easiest conversation to have. It's not the easiest conversation to have. Esther was right, I was opening a can. This is sparkling water, lemon. It's not a beer, it's too early for a beer. Yeah, I haven't had a pay raise in years. I haven't had a pay raise in years, but that, that is an awkward question. Awkward, uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable situation when you ask for one. Um, hello, boss. Um, I'd like to get a pay raise, please. <laughs> it's a very awkward conversation. 
But again, you could say rise as well. Good. Okay. We're very close to a couple of cool things. And also remember, we're going to do, I'm going to give you information about a free PDF, which has all the phrases from this lesson and how you can get that. Lolly Lolly says you have to negotiate your pay. Yeah, negotiate. So you say, I want a pay raise. How much do you want? An extra 10,000. We can give you five. I want seven and a half thousand. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's usually a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the idea when it comes to negotiating your uh, salary. All right, are you ready? Take a look at this one. We're going to talk about saving money now. You can see a picture of a piggy bank. So complete the sentence. Three letters. I'm not saving something money at the moment. I'm not saving something money at the moment. Complete this. Ingrid, that was quick. I'm not saving any money at the moment. I'm not saving any money at the moment. Oh, Otto says much. That's true too. I'm not saving much money at the moment. We're not saving much money at the moment. I'm not saving any money at the moment. That's a good distinction. If you're not saving any money, zero. If you're not saving much money, only a little bit. You're only saving a little bit. So that's a really good distinction. I'm not saving any money at the moment. We're not saving much money at the moment. What's the opposite of save with money? Okay, so you can save money or you can do something else. You can this. Stop something so much money. Think about verb patterns here. Verb patterns. Stop something so much money. Louise says that was easy. It's my everyday expression. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, lolly lolly, you can waste money. Waste money. You can also spend money. But complete this sentence. At Boo and Ingrid have it correct. Stop spending so much money. Not stop spend, but stop stop spending so much money. This is a great one to know. Stop spending. Stop going there. Stop wasting your food. We say this to children a lot. Stop wasting your food. Stop taking your shoes off. Or stop taking your shoes off too late. Stop spitting at your sister. That doesn't happen, but it's a good example. Stop spitting at your sister. <laughs> stop spending so much money. Okay? We need to stop spending so much money. So that's the opposite of this one. Save money. Spend money. You can also spend time, save time. Spend time and save time. And then I want you to have a look at this. Have you ever seen this TV show? Parks and Rec. Parks and Recreation. Have you ever seen this TV show? Because they have this uh, very famous now catchphrase, like an expression from the show, which is treat yourself. Treat yourself. And this is slang for yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. So this is slang for yourself. And in the show, a couple of the characters invented a treat yourself day where they went to the spa. 
they got expensive food. They bought expensive stuff. So it's a day where they treated themselves and they spent a lot of money on things that they didn't really need. Okay, so treat yourself. This is quite a common phrase, normally speaking, too. Treat yourself. So you can, why not treat yourself tonight and go get a massage? Why not treat yourself on your birthday, etc.? So, Parks and Recreation is a really good TV show for, for you guys, for English learners. It's a really good TV show. It's fun. It uses everyday English. And you're going to learn lots of words and phrases. Really good words and phrases. The, like I said as well, it's, it's a fun TV show. It's funny. It's, it's nice to watch. So I recommend trying it out if you want to watch a new TV show. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Cool. Okay, so treat yourself. Box and Rec, try it out. Now, have a look at this picture. Do you think that these guys are on a date? Do you think that these guys are on a date? People are asking where they can watch Parks and Recreation. Just do a Google search for it. Uh, it's on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix where you are. Yeah, try it out. But do you think that these, this, these two people are on a date? Do you think that they are on a date? Because it looks like it to me. And normally speaking, the guy will pay for the bill. Can you complete this sentence? Some people are saying, pay, buy, take. You can say buy, but there's something more common. Three letters. This is one of the power words in English. It's a power word. Three letters. No one has it yet. Interesting. People are saying that they seem to be on a date. Not I'll pay this. Not I'll treat this. Not I'll offer this. Not I'll pay this. Not I'll enjoy this. Although that's true. He's going to buy. He's going. To... Yes, Ollie. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. I'll get this. I'll get this. I'll get this. So it just means I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. I'll get this. This is something I say when I'm with friends. I'll say, I'll get this round. I'll get this round. Which means I'm going to buy the next lot of drinks. Now, notice that we're using I will. I'll. I'll get this. It's because we're deciding in that moment to buy, to do something in the future. I'll get this. And in fact, when you're at a restaurant, we use I will a lot. So, for example, if you're with kids and one of your kids say, I need to go to the bathroom, you can say, I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll get this. I'll buy uh, dinner for us. I'll get the lasagna, please. What do you want to drink? I'll get the... Iced tea. I never get that. I'll get the iced tea. I'll get the sparkling water. So get, like Daniel says, get is for everything. I need to make a lesson on get. Get, 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 get. It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's such a common verb. But yeah, this is a great example. An artist says he or she said this. Let's say she said it. I'll get this. I'll get this. So very good. I'll get this. But maybe 
No, let, let's say the guy wants to buy dinner. I'll get this. So she's very happy. She thinks, hmm, this guy is a great guy. He took me to a restaurant. He's buying me dinner. He's buying me drinks. But in an alternative universe, he says this. Let's split it. Let's split it. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let's split it. It means you pay for half and I'll pay for half. Or you pay for what you got and I'll pay for what I got. So in this universe, he doesn't get a second date. He doesn't get a second date because he said, let's split it. And that doesn't make her happy. So two options, let's split it or I'll get this. Yep, people are getting it right that they both pay, that they divide the bill. That's what it means to divide the bill. Dividir, yep, exactly. They both pay for the meal or 50-50. Very good, very good. So when we are at restaurants with friends, what we normally do is we split the bill. So the server comes over and they says, would you like one check or should I split it? Do you want one check, which means one tab for the whole table, or should I split it? And what they do is they bring you separate checks, separate checks. So they say, okay, this is for you and this is for you. I remember in the UK, it might have changed now, but what you normally do is you bring cash or you both put your credit cards down at the same time. But in America, they, they ask you, do you want one check or do you want to split it? Do you want one check or do you want to split it? Very good. Very good. So those are some good phrases. Let's split it and I'll get this. Now, one more thing, I'll just mention this. In America, you have to tip in restaurants. So when you're in a restaurant, you have to tip. And the going rate, the normal percentage is 20%. 20% you have to tip. Now I say you have to tip, but you can leave the restaurant without tipping. No one does it. No one does it. So everybody who goes to a restaurant, they tip. They tip. Ito says, let's split it sounds more fair. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Very good. And to tip means to give extra to the waiter. Yeah, or the server. Very good. Okay, so... The last quiz before, no, we've got two more. Let's, let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, 50%, that's a something. That is a something. Can you complete this phrase? It also means that's a deal. You say, that's a deal? That's a, can you complete this? Three, two, one. That's a bargain. That is a bargain. So if you see something, which, oh, I didn't show you, did I? I was showing a picture of me drinking water. Anyway, that's a something, that's a bargain. Okay, that's a bargain. So if, if something is a bargain, it means it's a deal. It's a deal. So that's a bargain. It actually means it's a really good deal. A really good deal. That's a bargain. Okay. You can also say it's 50% off. This is a good one. It's 50% off. It's a good one to know. 
It's 75% off at the moment. Shall we get it? The Tesla is 25% off. Let's get it today. But you can't afford it. I know, but you need to treat yourself. So <laughs> it's 50% off. You can also say it's half price. If something is 50% off, it is half price. And Ingrid said, that's a ripoff, is the opposite, exactly. Ripoff. It's a good deal, it's a ripoff. And I'll just put this into the live chat. It's a ripoff. Okay, we're, we're not almost there for details of the PDF, guys. Okay, so it's a ripoff. I'll put it into the chat for you. So bargain, a deal, ripoff. These phrases are going to be included in the PDF. Here is another one for you. Can you something me 500 euros? Can you something me 500 euros? What's the answer to this? That pitch is almost like you can take that money. You nearly take that money. Lovely says, where is the PDF? Instructions on that at the end of the lesson. All right. A lot of people are getting the answer I wanted. Can you lend me 500 euros? You can also say give. Give. Can you give me? There's a difference. To give means that you're never going to give that money back. Lend means that you're going to pay that person back. Can you lend me 500 euros? Good. And what about this one? Think about the opposite of lend. And I will just add in a little clue for you right there. I need to something 500 euros. Three, two, one. I need to borrow 500 euros. Lolly got it right, and Ibrahim got it right too. And Marijana too. Okay, so to borrow money, to lend money or to borrow. I'm. This is when it can get a little bit confusing for you when you're thinking about the difference between lend and borrow because you can use them both talking about the same action. So I can say, I'm going to borrow 500 euros from my friend. My friend is going to lend me 500 euros. It's the same action, but you can use lend or borrow depending on which one you want to put focus on. So we need to, we need to borrow 500 euros. We need to borrow 500 euros. My friend is lending me 500 euros. So it can be a little bit confusing for that. And that's why the PDF will help you with this. Okay. Let's do one more. And then we've got three phrases and then details of the free gift. Can you lend me a million dollars, please, lolly lolly? Okay, so we need to get a something. I know. Let me complete the sentence for the Tesla. We need to get a something for the Tesla. Can you complete this? Three, two, one. We need to get a loan for the Tesla. Okay, so we need to get a loan for the Tesla. So to get a loan means that you borrow money, but there is an interest rate. So you normally you borrow money from the bank and there is an interest rate where you pay money on the money that you've you've borrowed. So to get a loan, we need to get a loan for the Tesla. Now, 
A loan for a house has a very special word. What is that word? So we need to get a loan for the Tesla, but if you want it for a house, it is a mortgage. A mortgage. We need to get a mortgage for this new house. We need to get a mortgage for this new house. So you, the bank lends you money, you borrow money from the bank for a house, and that is called a mortgage, where you agree to an interest rate and you pay back that money over time. Good, to pay back money. I'll put that in the, the chat. Pay back money. A lot of people got this right. Loan and mortgage. Very good. Very good, everyone. Okay, before we finish, I've got three more expressions for you. This one. <laughs> this is raw bacon. But what does it mean to bring home the bacon? To bring home the bacon. What does this mean? I really want to cook that bacon, by the way. What does it mean to bring home the bacon? What does this mean, to bring home the bacon? It means to earn a living, to earn money from your job. So you can say like, oh, I need to work extra this, this weekend to bring home the bacon, to bring home the bacon. I need to work extra this weekend to earn more money, to bring home the bacon. It's good to bring the money home. Yep. It's to earn a living, to make money, to bring home the bacon. Now that is American bacon. British bacon is a little bit different. British bacon is a little bit different. And I can't wait to try British bacon again. Maybe soon. Okay, next one. Next one. If something is easy money, what does that mean? If something is easy money, money, what does that mean? So if someone says it's easy money, what does that mean? And I'm gonna give you a song with a little quiz. I love this quiz. Two shows a day, four nights a week, easy money. Which band is this? Two shows a day, four nights a week, easy money. So easy money is not illegal. Marijana, you've earned it without effort. Yeah, so it's, it means that you get a lot of money for not doing that much. Easy money. So in this example of the song, it's not monkey business. What band am I talking about here? What band am I talking about? The pictures are the clues. So two shows a day, four nights a week, easy money. This person is saying that they are performing twice a day, four nights a week. It's easy. We get paid a lot of money. It's easy to do. What band is this? These are lyrics from a, one of my favorite bands. The key or the clue is in the pictures. Got two pictures. Which band is, <gasps> Ollie, you got it. Arctic Monkeys, Arctic Monkeys. Keck got it too. I thought that was quite clever. Arctic Monkeys. One of my favorite bands. So check out, you've got a movie, you've got a TV show to watch, Parks and Rec, to check that out. Also have a look at Arctic Monkeys. And that song is called Star Treatment. Star Treatment. So check out that song, listen to it, and Listen to the way they say, easy money. I can't sing. I don't know why I try. Anyway, Arctic Monkeys, two shows a day, four nights a week, 
Easy money. Very good. And <laughs> Ollie says, I know you too well. Yes. For those who have watched live lessons from a year, two years, three years ago, I talk about Arctic Monkeys a lot. The last one. Look at this guy. That's the international symbol of when you have money to burn. We have money to burn. What does this mean? We have money to burn. We have money to burn. I was going to show a picture of somebody burning money. I don't like that. Well, I don't know why. I saw the picture of money burning, and I just didn't like it. So I showed this guy, who is obviously doing this, who's th thrown away his money, to throw away money. But what does it mean to have money to burn? Yep, yeah, very rich. Yep. So you say, oh, let's, you've got enough money for, to, to buy things that you don't need. So let's buy that Tesla. We've got money to burn. We've got money to burn. We can buy a Tesla. We've got money to burn. So it's very good. Again, it's going back to being well off, to being loaded, etc. Too much money. Yep, too much money. You've got too much money, so you spend it on things that you don't need got money to burn let's buy that tesla okay everybody this has been fun i hope you have enjoyed this lesson so now it's time to talk about the pdf so you can get this on facebook messenger okay and i'm going to give you the link to do this now when you click this link i hope it's working it wasn't working last week but when you click this link and i'll put it into the chat box I'll also leave a link in the description if you're watching the replay. Um, when you click this link, you will be subscribed to get Facebook messages, messages from me, okay, from to fluency. So you can unsubscribe by replying stop at any time, but click that link in the chat or the description. It, then it will, there's a button to click, and then you'll be part of the to Fluency Facebook Messenger group. And then on Friday, I'm going to send the PDF to everybody who clicks that link. Some people are saying there's a problem, it's not working. I'll just find the other link. I've had a couple of problems with my website recently. So I'm just going to get the link again. Click here, set up, copy to clipboard, back over here. All right, try that. That link will work. All right, we're, ha we're having some technical issues. I don't think I can include links that aren't my website. Okay, what we're going to do is I'll leave it as a comment on the video. So as soon as this video is over, I'll leave it as a comment there. So we'll check out the comments after this lesson. Okay, good. So what we're going to do now, this is going to be a little bit different, but in two minutes, I'm going to go live on Instagram and chat to you all. So we're going to do a question and answer session there on Instagram. And I'll leave the link in the Instagram profile too, so you can get the link there for the free PDF. Okay, so again, I'll leave the link to that PDF in the comment of this video. And if you're watching live, go to Instagram, search for to fluency, add me, and then I'm going to go live in five minutes. Great, so if you found this lesson useful, if you think it has helped you in any way, then please like and share it with your friends. Share it on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you want to share things.
Okay. Again, thank you so much for being here. We're going to go live again in two weeks. So be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Okay, everybody. Speak to you soon. See you on Instagram.